Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here. I want to welcome you back to my Intro to Twine series. And in this episode, I will be covering CSS images. This is this episode is a follow-up to my previous episode, which was HTML images. And in that Im episode, we put images into our Twine stories using the image element, which is part of the HTML specification. This time, we're going to be adding images to our story using CSS, and this is another language. Later in another series, I'll be covering how to learn and how to use CSS with Twine. But for now, I wanted to allow you to dip your toe into the waters so you can start using CS images in, CSS images in your story. All right, here we are in Derelict, good old fashioned Derelict, and we're gonna open up the first passage. And here's where we have our first image. And you can see here, this is referencing an image that I have saved on my computer. And this is showing the where to where this image can be found. If you haven't watched the HTML video on this series I, of HTML images, I highly suggest you do because I cover what this syntax actually means and how it makes sense. Well, with CSS, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be applying images, but an image in CSS, we're going to be using a background attribute. And this essentially makes the image act as more of a wallpaper. In this case here, this image is an element on the page itself. In fact, let's play the story right now. And you can see here, it has its width and its height and so forth. And this is its own element. Whereas with CSS images, we're gonna paste it onto an already existing element. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna create a new element. HTML defines an element an element excuse me defines an element known as a div tag and a div tag you can think of as being a way just to hold content so i'm going to put div this is my opening tag here and this is my closing tag here and i can put whatever content i want in here and this is going to be a block level content and later on when i do the series on in html i'll talk about the differences between block content and inline content but here, I'm just gonna put hello. Hello and welcome to another Twine episode. Now if we play this, we'll see this content. You can see it just shows up here and it looks completely like the other content. Well, that's true, it does, but we can now start styling it as well. I'm gonna be using a style attribute and this is where I can put my custom CSS in here. And I can say, I want this to have a width of, let's say 200 pixels. I want to give it a height of 200 pixels. And to really show you what this div looks like, let's give it a background color. And we'll say it's red. Now let's play this and you'll be immediately be able to see this content here. And you can see how the text fits all within here, as opposed to the other content in our twine, it just keeps on rolling out like so. And what happens if we keep on, let's make this say a 100 by 100. What do you think happens to the text? Actually, let's make the height 50. We'll play this and you can see the text starts to overflow. In fact, let's add some more text here. And then you'll see that the text just goes spilling out uh, out of the bottom of this div element. I can ultimately change this. So if I want to define the overflow as being hidden, I can do this as well. And then the text is just swallowed up. And this is a div element. Again, it's like it's like its, its own element, very much like the image element. And what we may want to do is ultimately put an image behind this. Again, we want to paste this like wallpaper. The way we do that is we use a background tag, or excuse me, a background attribute. So here we have these all these various attributes that I've been using. This is the name of the attribute that I'm using. And then I use a colon, and then I put the value of the attribute. I could just move stuff like this. And you can see these are all the different values that we're using in this, this style attribute right here. I'm gonna be using a background. We have a background color, 
Now we want to provide a background and we're going to provide an image. I use the keyword URL and now I'm going to I'm going to define where this image is located on my computer or in my service computer. In this case I'm just going to copy this here. And it works very much the same as a regular image, except now we're pasting this in the background. Now if I play this, it's not going to show up. And the reason it's not going to show up, because right now I'm using this in the Twine environment. To actually see this image, I'm going to have to publish my story in the location where my image is. And now we'll launch this up. And it's not showing up. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. When working with CSS and attributes in particular, you always have to add a semicolon after the value. That tells the interpreter this value is ending. What happened here was that this value ended this without the semicolon, the interpreter thought this overflow hidden was included as part of this background attribute. And let's reload this. In here, you, can see, you can't really see the image itself. So what we can do is I'm going to open up my inspector again, and I'm going to change the height of this. And I can do this real time. There we go. So I'm going to make this 150, and you can see here that this, now the text is a little hard to read, and what I can do is then add some color. We'll change the text color to white. And now you can see here, this, we have our content, we have our div here, and now we have this image pasted behind it. It's another way of working with images, and it may suit what you're trying to do, it may not. In one story I, I demoed in a previous video that I'm working on, I pasted a background image behind the entire document. And that background image changed depending what part of the what part of the story the player was in. And it made a nice, nice little way to bring out feelings, the feeling of the story and the theme of the story, in, and even more particularly the mood. But that may not be applicable w with what you're trying to do. Again, it's all within the scope of your own story. So this is another tool that you can use to, to display, to achieve whatever goal you're looking for. Again, you have the HTML image, which is included with the document. And then you can use a CSS background image, which again, acts like wallpaper behind a certain element. I'll be diving into this a little more deeply in my follow-up series. I'll be covering HTML and I'll also be covering CSS, so you can really start to see how all these things work together and how you can use them to create some awesome Twine stories.